Oh, you've got to be kidding me. We've got to replace the roof this year and that crumbling parking lot. And oh, by the way, the HVAC system is going out. Why do I have to deal with these as a pastor? I'm supposed to be the visionary leader who can pray and preach and cast vision. And I've got to deal with these big ticket maintenance items. How do I do that? Well, today's episode of Church Tips, we're gonna go right into the heart of how you as a leader can help pay for and plan for those big ticket items, maintenance items that come along periodically and do it well and move the church forward in the meantime. Here we go. Back in the day, I was part of a major construction project of a new sanctuary unit and related uh, offices and kids' ministry areas and so on. And this this building was a big sanctuary in the middle, and then it had four different segments off. It had a prayer uh, classroom segment, it had a, a worship music segment, an office segment, and a nursery segment. You'll remember those, yep. how that all laid out. Yep. Well, on the under the under over the office segment, uh, above our unit was all the air conditioning uh, stuff. So it's sitting up there, this monster size unit sitting up there. And <laughs> that roof on that segment, not the other three or the big one, but on that segment leaked all the time. And it leaked right down in the workroom. So here you've got your copier and all the stuff and the workroom stuff and the people are in there trying to work. <laughs> it's leaking whenever it's raining. And we're constantly spending money on trying to fix that roof. And guess what? That was not cheap. (laughs) That is not just, oh, we have to buy some extra paper clips here. So the the question comes up when you're dealing with that kind of, what do you do when you're dealing with this, what I call big ticket items? You don't do them every day of life, but periodically you got to put a roof on. Periodically you have to resurface the parking lot. Periodically you got to do big things that don't happen every year but they do happen uh, from time to time, and that comes with with having a building. So, well, today we want to talk about six ways to pay for these expensive church buildings. Oh, you have to pay for that maintenance <laughs> items. I know. Yeah, <laughs> somehow the you gotta you gotta you pay gotta the bills. Come up with the money. Gotta... So we're gonna talk about how do you do that? What are some ways you can do that? And 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 the first one I want to jump into okay. is simply to plan ahead. Here's the reality. There's going to be expensive items coming your way. Whether or not they've hit yet, they are coming. It will come. So you have to plan ahead. You have to set money aside every month. That's what I encourage you to do, is set money aside every month. That is, This is like a non-negotiable. So if you look at your current budget and you say, the money coming in is the same amount as the money going out, and that's and you're not factoring in for savings for something big, you are headed toward destruction because you're not going to be able to afford something big when it comes. And so you've got to figure out how to trim some things back so that way you are uh, putting that money aside. Every month is ideal for the big items that are that are coming. Uh, and then also, as it relates to planning ahead, you might even try to schedule some things yeah on the calendar so you know, hey, we're gonna be doing some sort of maintenance uh, here coming this summer, or we're gonna be doing something in the fall. And so that way you can plan, not only budgetarily, but you can plan just with the actual calendar and and maintenance of things, so that you might even be able to prevent some of those unexpected things from coming. Well, and I can tell you, if you're not planning like this, here's what's gonna happen, and you're living hand to mouth, you're gonna reach that point two years from now when you gotta replace that roof or that AC unit or something. And all of a sudden, you gotta have the money. Yeah. And you're gonna end up borrowing the money. Yeah. And that's a loser, to be borrowing for maintenance things. You don't wanna be doing that. Yeah. So I cannot encourage you enough yeah. to plan ahead. Yes. Second one, Jonathan. Yeah, second thing is you you want to coach the the church board right. on this whole thing. So you, you're the one who's leading the financial um, effort. You're you're like the CFO, uh, so to speak. And so uh, you have to be able to help them uh, understand. And and a lot of these guys or gals, they I mean they might be businessmen or they, they you know so they may understand this, but not everyone is. Right. And so whatever whoever it is, whoever makes up your church board, you have to make sure you tie the spending to the mission. Right. And so even on a, on a frustrating roof leak, how can we tie that to mission? Yep. Uh, you, you have to be thinking about all that, that all the time because then when you when people, when the board members see, okay, well this big expense, you know, we need to do this because this is going to help us do X, Y, Z. And even if it's not a fun expense, tie it to the mission. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. the third one uh, I, I'm throwing in here, 
<clears throat> this is a little bit unique and it's one to be very careful with, and that is to cultivate a specific donor. Now, normally, I'm going to go back to the first point Jonathan mentioned, that you need to be planning ahead and you need to be doing a big ticket maintenance items out of your general fund, uh, your general fund uh, uh, budget. Uh, or if you have a building fund budget that accommodates these kinds of things, uh, yeah. you, you don't want to be going to the congregation to say, the roof leaks, now we have to take up an offering. Oh, the parking lot's all cracked and we got potholes out there. We've yeah. got to replace it. That is not what to do. No, no one wants to no, give to that. That's, everybody feels yeah. like it's a sinking ship when yep. you're doing that. Yep. However, there are times that the Lord will bring people to the church that have unique <clears throat> giftings in giving. Uh, and you will want to be careful in how you develop that, cultivate that mm -hmm. donor but sometimes a donor will step up and say, I'll take care of that. Yeah. Not in a public way. You don't want this to be, oh, hey, we get to brag on how much money Joe gave. Yeah. But if you'll, and, and you're doing that well in advance. So if you have to put a roof on in, uh, in 2024, in uh, you know, April 2024, you're not cultivating this donor in March of April 24. You're, you're doing that years in yes. advance. But it is something that pastors need to be attuned to to uh, develop this kind of a donor. Number four is to create budget margin. So again, back to the very first point Jonathan talked about with planning ahead. Mm -hmm. If, you're, if you're, your uh, income and outgo are the same, you're headed for a disaster. Yeah. You need to go and do things inside your budget now on all areas of ministry, all areas of li all your line items, in order to create that margin. Believe me, a rainy day fund will be needed. You need to create a budget margin. Never plan to spend all that you take in. That's it's it's a <laughs> to do that personally to do that with the church yeah. is a loser all the way around. Yeah. Uh, the next thing you want to do is reallocate budgeted expenses. Yep. So you want to be careful here, but there may be a point uh, as you're getting ready to need to make some big expenses, pay for some big expenses, is you might have to reallocate some things. And, and so that means going through and trimming some. Um, maybe you trim a little bit off of each of the line items of your church's budget, um, or you might take a, a big chunks from just a few areas. You know, you could kind of look at it from two different ways. You know, maybe just do a flat 10% cut on all areas, or you just really trim back and, and change your strategy for a few of those line items that you had. And, uh, and so in either case, you have to, you got to make sure that, or you might need to reallocate, um, those now one of the things we talked about in episode seven is how to balance the church budget right. and when it's all said and done you still have to balance it yeah. and that's the tricky part otherwise you're borrowing yeah. and and that's the whole goal here even in this episode is to help you not have to borrow money for maintenance, maintenance. things yeah and so you want to make sure to check that one check that one out exactly exactly the last item we want to talk to you about is to defer one year now, this again, I guess, how do I get the ones that you always have to be careful with? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The deferring one year is, uh, I mean, clearly if water's coming in from the roof, you, you don't defer that a year. Right. Uh, but let's take the parking lot. Your parking lot's old, yeah. it's cracked, you're developing potholes. Maybe there are some things you could do this year and you say, okay, listen, if we could defer this one more year, we're yeah. gonna be in a better position. And that could be true. No. If you defer one more year, then you better take the steps that will drive you to be in the position next year to do what you say you're going to do. Otherwise, if you don't do anything different, you're going to be sitting here one year from now and you're in the same boat. Yeah. So if you defer a big ticket, big maintenance item a year, uh, which is legit, just be sure you're setting the money aside during that year to strengthen your position at that time. And let me interject too, that you wanna make sure that you select the right thing to de defer. Right. Um, you and I actually took uh, my couple of my kids out for a bike ride yesterday. Oh, yeah. And we went on a bike that. ride, we went on a bike ride, and, and, and I, actually, I actually pointed out uh, to Dick and I said, hey, we need to do an episode on this yeah. because um, this is an area. This is an area that churches need to know about. Now, I don't want to go into the whole episode. We're going to save this right. for another episode. But this church, 
the building was nasty oh, dirty, oh, just oh. just filthy dirty. Yeah. I mean, it was just like unacceptable. Well, if you say, well, we're going to delay this for another year, I don't, you know. Now, we're not talking broken. We're talking dirty. Yeah, it just needs the to be. The building was Yeah, dirty. it just needs to be clean. Now, it's going to cost. You're going to have to power wash and do some. I mean, so you're, there's going to be some expense involved. Yeah. Well, if you defer that another year, you know, I... I I guess I just go look at it and say, why would I want to go to a church that that doesn't look like they take care of yeah, stuff? They don't take care of things. Yeah, and so you got to. So you're going to lose by, by yeah, deferring lose, that. Yeah, so you got to think through what are the things that you're not going to lose right. Right. Um, by. Now, in the next episode, actually, we're going to be talking about the first three places to cut the church budget. If you need to cut, what are some things you can do right away that are going to help you when it comes right. to determining the budget? So you want to make sure to check that episode out. Uh, the next episode that th that's coming out. Yeah, so, good. what else? Okay, uh, well, let's just do a little recap here. Okay. You know, we've got these uh, five things that we talked to you about. Number one, which was probably the monster one of all, yeah. plan ahead. Yes. Budget ahead. Set your money aside, and you're going to be really glad you did. Uh, coach the board. Cultivate a specific donor. Uh, uh, create budget margin and defer one year when absolutely necessary. If you'll do these things, you're going to be well on your way to uh, being able to have the money set aside to uh, uh, really be able to take care of these big expense items. Yep. Well, uh, we want to again mention that the Kids Ministry Track did release this yeah, week. Right. And so we are so excited about this um, this online course. It's part of our Church University Courses for Pastors. Churchuniversity.com. Yep, go to yep. churchuniversity.com. You'll be able to get all the information. You can sign up. It's perfect for your kids pastor, whether they're a paid staff member, whether they're um, a volunteer uh, kids ministry leader. And, uh, huge, huge discount on uh, this launch right here. Yeah, so, yeah, so take advantage just, of it. Yeah, we just uh, released it on Wednesday, and so this is the perfect time to get it and grab grab your copy. Forty four video course, uh, and so uh, make sure to check that out as well. I want to encourage you to subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe on YouTube or on podcast, and please rate and review. We want to hear from you, your feedback on this podcast, and so we look forward to uh, producing more of these. And in the meantime. We'll see you next time. Hey, Jonathan here, real quick before you go. Everything in your ministry rises and falls on your leadership. So investing in your leadership is essential to staying healthy and growing the ministry. And that's why I want to invite you to join us inside the Leaders.Church membership. This online streaming service for pastors gives you access to more than 300 videos plus training material to level up your leadership and improve your ministry skills. If you'd like to do that, I want to invite you to go to leaders.church slash boost. Again, that's leaders.church slash boost. Well, thanks again for joining us on the Church Tips Podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.